singing good songs, aren't they? Enjoyed that. Let's go in our Bibles to uh, Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. I've, I've been looking at the theme of the fight of faith. The fight of faith. And um, last week, what we looked at was that to live by faith, we need to understand what Jesus says. You, you remember in some of the Gospels, Jesus would say something and the disciples would have no, wouldn't really have a clue what he actually meant by it. Uh, the, one, the ones we looked at was when he talked about him being bread and they, they thought he meant a loaf of bread and he was talking about spiritual things. Uh, we need to understand what God says in order to, to follow it. This week, I, I want us to look at the idea, anyway, of that we need to not only understand it, we need to believe it, <laughs> and we need to obey it. Uh, what, to you, what does that mean when, when you think of that term? What does it mean uh, to believe what God says? Trusting him? What I wrote down was, I act on what I know to be true. You know, if, I, if I really believe it, I'm going to do what he's, he's said. Um, dealing with children sometimes, you know, they hear you, and, uh, but they don't do it. Or adults do. And you say to them, did you hear what I said? <laughs> and you know they heard what you said, but they didn't actually believe you, you know. Uh, you need to clean your room. Well... I do need to clean my room, but am I going to? <laughs> and, uh, you know, with the things of God, we need to hear, we need to understand, and we need to believe Him. Uh, in Matthew chapter 17, I'm going to start reading in verse 14. It says, when they were come to the multitude, okay, now let me, let me just say this. Right before this is when they've, they've gone to the Mount of Transfiguration. So it's Jesus and three of the disciples. All right, so... Uh, the other disciples he's talking about would probably be the nine. I would assume it would be the, the ones that didn't go with Jesus. Um, verse 14, When they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Jesus answering, answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Now I assume he's directing that to his disciples, not to that man. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him, out of the child, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the, the, to the disciples, I'm sorry, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. I'll just stop, uh, stop reading there. Uh, here's a, a situation where something wonderful has just happened with Jesus and Peter, James, and John. And as they come back, here comes this man saying, listen, ask your disciples for help, and they, they couldn't help me. And uh, Jesus has to, has to say to them, the reason you couldn't do it was because of your unbelief. Now, let, let me just relate a couple of words here. Um, I have the wrong word here. Anyway, um, this this truth I I think relates to Jesus' parable in Matthew chapter thirteen, when he talks about the parable of the sower. Uh, we talked about this this last week, and uh, we saw that, that the first one it falls by the wayside and the, the devil snatches it away. And the thing he's talking about in that parable is the word. And when he explains it, he says, uh, someone hears the word, and it's, it's snatched away. And, and this, I think, relates to the second one, where the seed falls on stony places. Uh, take, take a look there in Matthew chapter 13, verse 20, just a couple pages to your left. 
Matthew 13, verse 20, that he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but jeereth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. That's where I was, I got ahead of myself. Now that word by, those words by and by, or anon, up, up earlier, uh, Growing up, I always thought that meant after a while, you know, whenever. But by and by means immediately. Kind of strange, isn't it? Old English, you know. But uh, by and by doesn't mean whenever. It means immediately. Yeah, you, you look it up you, if you don't believe me. Um, and the, the key phrase in these two verses is, uh, not root in himself, yet hath he not root in himself. Uh, here's, here's a person who receives the word of God. Uh, they receive it with joy, but it's superficial, you, you'd have to call it. Uh, it's um, it's kind of kind of skin deep, and you know, there's a lot of people who have superficial beliefs. And Jesus uses the, the word there at the end of verse 21, by and by he is offended. Uh, if you look that up, the word, the, the Greek word is, has, has the word scandalized in it, scandalizio or something like that. Uh, this is a person who is just, they're offended, they're, they're scandalized that if they would live for God, this would happen to them. Yeah, you, you've heard people say that. Man, I was doing my best to live for God and he let this happen to me. Oh, how could he do that? <laughs> uh, they're offended. And that's, that's exactly the, you know, obviously the right word. They, they don't approve of what God has done to them. Now, the Bible says the reason that happened, in the middle of the verse 20, when tribulation or pers persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he's offended. When it comes, poof, you know, they, oh, this is not, not the way it should be. They're, they're offended. And you know, if we're going to live by faith, we have to not only hear what God says and understand it, but we've, we've got to live by it. You know, we've got to believe it. Uh, the words there, tribulation, and persecution, tribulation, if you look it up, it, it has to do with pressure. You know, how in life there's pressures that come. Tribulation, pressures. And persecution means persecution. <laughs> right? That's not a hard word. Um, in uh, Matthew chapter 11 and verse uh, 6, Jesus said, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. You know, if we're going to live by faith, our goal really is to be like Jesus. And, of course, we know nobody ever gave Jesus a hard time. <laughs> uh, he, he had it pretty rough, and eventually they took him and, and uh, crucified him. In uh, Romans 10, verse 17, it says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If we're going to live by faith. Uh, we have to be willing to obey God and take whatever consequences come. There are people even today who, if they trust Christ, their family will kill them. Their family will kick them out or persecute them or, you know, all kinds of terrible things that can happen. Uh, living by faith doesn't guarantee pleasant situations. It says there in, in Matthew 13, verse 21, Yet he hath not root in himself, but jureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he's, he's offended. You know, without a growing faith, you're not going to be able to handle the results of living by God's word. Uh, things are going to change when you, when you trust Christ. Uh, I don't know if anything comes to mind if I ask this question, but what are some pressures that come from living by faith? You know, we talk about that, that word, tribulation, meaning pressures. What are some pressures that come on your life when you become a Christian? Thing that comes to mind. If not, don't worry about it. But yeah, family. Boy, they can put pressure on you, can't they? What do you mean you're you're going to be going to church every Sunday? No, that's when we meet for our family meeting. But, you know, whatever. I don't know. Others? Anything that comes to mind? Okay. Hmm. Yeah. What 
What are some persecutions that come from living by faith? Persecutions are when people on purpose do things to us. Probably experienced some. Yeah, you go out door knocking and they give you a hard time. Evangelizing, yeah. Bring persecution. Say again? Yeah. You can even lose your job. We've known people who've lost their job because of their Christian testimony. Um, one that comes to mind is Israel Falau. <laughs> you know? I mean, it, it constantly amazes me when I keep hearing about it in the news that logical people generally of goodwill cannot seem to understand the issue in that. In that. Yeah, they just say, oh, he's prejudiced against homosexuals. It wasn't even primarily a statement about homosexuals. But anyway, uh, yeah, if you share scripture verses with people, man, it can, it can bring persecution, can't it? In um, Matthew, where we started reading in Matthew 17, verse 17, Jesus used two words um, to describe this kind of superficial faith. Uh, oh, faithless and perverse generation. Oh, faithless and perverse generation. And I want to look at those, those two words uh, to help us. We, we don't want to be superficial Christians, I hope. You know, we don't want to just be uh, touchy-feely Christians who uh, our feelings are always uh, hurt or something like that. Uh, first of all, faithless. The word just means unfaithful or unbelieving. Uh, the word is used again in John chapter 20. And uh, who do you think of, of the disciples, when you think of one who had trouble believing? Thomas, yeah, they, they call him Doubting Thomas. Matthew 20, verse 27. Thomas had said, I, I'm not going to believe unless I... He touched the wounds. He says to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. He used the exact same word there. Um, you know, we can have a real superficial belief if, if we're not going to uh, just believe what God has said and, and obey it. Uh, faith that is say this, faith that is faithless <laughs> is faith when we already have what we need. It's real easy to trust the Lord when you already have what you need, isn't it? The Lord, you know, oh my soul, well, we're, we're full of good cheer when, that, when we've got everything we need. Um, sometimes it's faith in what we've done before. Uh, I think that's probably what happened with the disciples when they tried to cast that demon out of the out of the child, um, his, the man's son. God had given them power to do that, and they, they'd done it before. And they just probably thought, well, here we go again, you know. But it didn't, didn't happen the same way. And it's real easy to have faith when things keep happening, you know, as long as things keep happening. But when something changes, then you have to stop and think, well, it's, it's not God that's failing. You know, don't, we, can, we should never think that. Um, I remember a guy telling me that verse, if raise, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old and not depart from it, he said, I did that, and my kids haven't turned out. So obviously, you know, he didn't say it, but obviously it was God's fault. Well, I can tell you, he didn't, anyway. Yeah, it, it wasn't God that failed. Uh, we need to be careful. We don't want to be faithless. We don't want to have a superficial faith. Sometimes things are going to change. Sometimes the same thing you did ten times before and it works is not going to work. Well, you get, well, you might have to trust the Lord. Oh, that'd be unique. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's just the way it is. Uh, faithlessness sometimes is faith without tribulation or persecution. Now, there's, there's places in the world where it's pretty easy to be a Christian. And, and you know, Australia is really is one of them. You know, if the worst persecution you get is somebody giving you a bit of a hard word when you knock on their door, I mean, that, that's not really that bad. Um, God's point in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, when he talks about the grain of mustard seed, is that our faith should be growing. He's not saying you, you need to go outside and, and uh, you know, move Mount Kosciuszko or, you know, something like that. He's just saying you, your faith needs to be growing. The, the point of a, of a 
Uh, the mustard seed is, is not just how tiny it is, it's that it grows. And it's something comes of it. And, uh, you know, things are, are not, things are not always going to be the same. And our faith should not always be the same. We need to have a growing faith. Uh, we need to be faithful, uh, committed to obeying God's word. Uh, he talked about them being faithless, not believing. He also talked about, he used the word perverse. I find this interesting. That word means distorted. If you listen to religious radio or any, any of that stuff at all, you will hear example after example after example of distorted faith. I'll guarantee you. Uh, there's just all kinds of people giving testimonies and misquoting scriptures. and uh, You get all kinds of distorted faith. There's a lot of distorted faith. Probably always has been. Uh, sometimes it's just things we just kind of think should be the way it should be. I should, I'm a Christian. I should, I should be happy all the time. I'm not happy. What's wrong with God? <laughs> you know? Uh, that's, that's a distortion. Jesus even wept. Uh, I'll, I'll always be well. You know, there, there's people who teach, uh, you know, wealth, health, and happiness and all that. Now, I'll be rich. You know, if I live by faith, I should be rich. Uh, I'll never struggle with sin or selfishness or temptation. Listen, that's a distorted faith, folks. Uh, I'll always feel forgiven. Uh, I'll always be safe. Nothing bad could ever happen to me. Uh, you read, have you actually read the Bible lately? <laughs> uh, there's some pretty godly people who had some pretty bad things happen to them. Um, often faith is distorted, uh, or, or let me put it this way, sometimes faith is distorted in mistaking the difference between the physical and the spiritual. As, as Jesus was talking to them about bread, he was talking about spiritual bread. And they said, oh, he's upset because we didn't bring bread with us. Uh, he'd talk about the resurrection, and they'd say, oh, I wonder, wonder what he means. In uh, John chapter 6 and uh, verse 53, this is a really interesting portion of Scripture when you think about the, the people he's talking to. When he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. <laughs> you know, the thoughts that must have gone through their heads as they, as they heard him say that. And later on, he says, the words that I speak to you, they're spirit and they're life. He said, I'm getting across to you a spiritual concept. And sometimes the reason we're perverse or distorted in our faith is because we're taking a spiritual thing and trying to make it physical. Or we're taking a physical thing and trying to make it spiritual. You know, we've got to understand what God is saying. And we need to, to take his, his context on it. A shallow, superficial faith is not where we want to be as Christians. And... From what I can see, the only way to change that is to deepen the soil. <laughs> and we're the soil. You know, he, uh, the Lord is trying to put his roots down in us. In fact, in Revelation 22, Jesus says he's the root. Uh, that's what we want is Jesus firmly implanted uh, in our hearts. And I, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, a seed when it's, it's growing. That looks, if, if, they, if seeds experience pain, that would be painful. <laughs> You know, it's getting split and, you know, things are going. In fact, Jesus said, except the seed die, it remains alone. Uh, we have to die to self. Uh, we've got to quit uh, living for self, living for our feelings to live by faith. Uh, there, there's so many verses that we could look at to encourage us in this. One that came to my mind was 2 Peter 3.18. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to be growing. Not just staying the same. Uh, John 15, 5. Let's see, we should know that one. Is that the one? I am the vine, ye are the branches. Find it so I can make sure I get it right. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Superficial faith just takes the things we can do and, and satisfied with that. But a faith that's growing is, is, going to see, is going to want to see God doing things in their life and God changing things in their life. Uh, it's interesting, if you, if you think about John 15, you know, all the verses, the encouragement and, and that that's there, the, the next chapter, John 16, 1, he says, These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. 16, 1. 
You know, he talks about abiding in Christ. He talks about uh, the world hating you and, you know, the difficulty you can face because of being a Christian. He says, I'm warning you so that you won't be offended, so that you can live by faith and not just a superficial faith. I'd encourage you to take a look at Hebrews chapter 11 and the, the hall of faith as uh, different ones that live for God, and they had some tough situations. And when he gets to the end, he talks about those that were, that were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection, and other had trials of cruel mockings, and uh, they were stoned, sawn asunder, tempted, slain with the sword. Uh, these are people of faith. And it doesn't always turn out that uh, uh, sometimes the fire's on and, and uh, we burn up, you know, when they throw us in. But uh, we can still live by faith. And we don't have to be people who live just for our feelings and for the, the uh, superficial things of life. Uh, I found it encouraging to, to go through this, so studying on this. Um, Matthew chapter... 17 and Matthew chapter 13 and the, the different passages that I was able to, to look at. Um, grain and mustard seed. They used to have little things where they'd, they'd have a ball of clear plastic and inside was a little grain of mustard seed. It's pretty little. Uh, but God, God says that's, we just have to have faith and we need to have faith in him. And we need to understand and obey uh, what he says. Uh, we're so concerned about the consequences many times that we forget the key is trusting the Lord. Trusting the Lord. Come what may. I uh, encourage you. Uh, God teaches us something here. We don't want to be faithless and perverse. Uh, we want to have faith. We don't want to be offended in the Lord. Uh, we want to glory in the Lord. And uh, we certainly can. Believe what God says. The fight of faith. Any questions or comments before we...